Hello, so I'm going to do a video on a Norwegian gas mask today, and I think this might be my very first Norwegian gas mask. This is a Heli Hansen LF62, uh, so Lima Foxtrot 62, I don't know if you can see that on there. Now there's quite a lot of Heli Hansen 62 models as far as I'm aware, and they've all got slightly different designations, and I think it was just the filter ports are a bit different than everything else. But as far as I'm aware, this was a Norwegian gas mask made for army, sort of military use, civil defence use, and industry use. Because of a lot of the Heli Hansen masks, they were all sort of for different purposes. So it's made from quite a soft, flexible rubber. Quite a strange material, but these always look a bit squished when you see them. It's got an interesting smell to it. I, it feels almost like a PVC. I don't know if it is, but if you're familiar with a lot of raincoat materials, it kind of feels like that. So it's got a six-point head harness of adjustable straps. That's pretty simple. Although it's a bit strange, because it seems the rear strap is the neck strap done up with the uh, previous two straps. So that's what the inside looks like. As you can see, it's pretty squished. So it's a good panoramic lens design. Um, but again, it's made from a sort of flexible material. So it's actually a soft plastic for this lens material, rather than being sort of a hard polycarbonate or sort of acrylic type material. So that's strange. It looks like it's got a 40 millimeter port there because as far as I'm aware, quite a few of these Heli Hansons all use different filters. So before I just open the filter that came with it, um, what's quite interesting is this actual filter was from August 2009. So I imagine this filter is a newer one than the mask, but let's have a look. It sounds like there's silica gel in here. Unless this is something like a Scott GSR filter in here. I know, it's, oh, that's interesting, looks like an S10 filter, like an Avon filter type one. So it also has a bag of silica gel in here as well, it looks. So I've got a load of silica gel with this, which is nice, because silica gel is always handy to put with uh, Geiger counters and... Uh, the other things. So this is a PS10 filter, so yeah, randomly it's got an Avon filter with it for some reason. So let's open this up, made a nice hiss, so the filter's been stored in excellent condition, that's good to know. And let's stick this on the mask, and this will be a good filter for just actually having as a spare for doing tests and masks. So obviously this isn't the original filter that would have come with this mask, but for whatever reason the seller bundled it in. So I won this on an auction on eBay recently, um, and it was only about £20 I won it for in the end with postage, so that's not bad, coming with a sealed filter and a mask itself. Now let's see if this squishy mask still fits me. And it'll tighten the straps up. <clears throat> I don't know how good this voice diaphragm is, but it's an interesting looking mask. It's kind of... Design-wise, reminds me of a lot of the World War II masks. Um, not the straight Norwegian ones, but, you know, the um, just general kind of um, civil masks sorts of countries made. I imagine this was quite a cheap design because of the fact that, um, obviously, the entire mask is made from a more flexible kind of material, like a plasticky kind of material rather than necessarily a rubber. So, that's the mask done up tight. Seems to be pressurising, makes a bit of a weird sound, but I think that's just the uh, sort of plastic. So yeah, this is an interesting mask. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable mask in the world, and it's probably not the strongest in terms of materials it's built from, but this is an interesting design. The panoramic lens isn't too distorted. Um, obviously, the problem with having a flexible panoramic lens is there is little bits of distortion and blur to the field of view. But otherwise, it's not too bad. But, yeah, this is a very interesting mask, because um, I'd seen these before on eBay, but never in good condition and generally for quite a lot, so I was quite happy when I actually won a bid on one for not too much. Especially considering the condition of it. So, yeah, there you go, one of these old Heli Hansen masks. Probably worth picking up if you find one in good condition, rather than poor condition. I'm just going to try and get these straps a bit better with my face. Probably need to undo these ones ever so slightly. Because now the voice diaphragm is digging into my nose, which isn't good. But, uh, these rear straps are quite difficult to adjust, there we go. Yeah, overall certainly not a bad mask design. It's got a little exhale valve there, so you can obviously... You can see the valve there, and obviously this is the bit designed to just be a deflector. Um, but yeah, overall, very simple design. I like it because of how simple it is. So... Again, I don't know what the unit cost would be of manufacturing a mask like this if you did it today, because, again, I assume this is originally a design from the 1960s. Um, but, again, it's actually quite a clever design if it was cheap enough to do. And as I said, there are a lot of variants of these. 
maybe some of my Norwegian viewers or some of the um, sort of more historically interested collectors than me will be able to tell you, um, you know, all the different variants. I did find some good blog pages that I might end up reading loads and loads of detail into. But again, it seems like these Heli Hansen series, they did loads of different variants, each with sort of slightly different filter connectors, but at least this one is 40mm NATO, so, you know, it's easy to put filters on it. But yeah, it's an interesting mask design, isn't it? You very rarely see things like this, so it's quite nice to actually, um, you know, get your hands on something like this, so, yeah. Strange mask design. I'm sure there's a reason masks didn't really carry on with this design, but... I would imagine, just for any governments out there, you know, that don't make respirators for civilians, even though, you know, we've we've been all over this before, but especially now Corona's in the news, if you're a government and you were looking to mass-produce masks for civilians, this might be a very good way of doing it, because I'm sure these plasticky materials, sort of the plasticky rubber materials this is made out of, would have been a lot cheaper to mass-produce than a lot of mask designs out there. Um, so it does make you think... You know, it's a bit more like the modern escape hood designs, if you think how they're made. It reminds me a lot more of those. Obviously, it's a lot better made than the escape hood type masks. But, um, yeah, there you go. Go. There you go. <laughs> so, Heli Hansen um, LF62. Afraid I can't give you loads of information on this because, again, um, I'd never really seen Norwegian masks available in the UK before, so I just did a very quick bit of reading on these. Um, and, you know, it seems that they did different derivatives for different purpose. So, I imagine this was a military more a military civil defence intended version due to the filter design on it just being 40mm Stanag rather than it being, you know, any of the weird um, derivatives of like 3M style filters because some of these um, you see have like a filter on each side um, and that would make sense actually why that valve's there that serves no purpose because um, I imagine it would have been they used almost the same face piece for a lot of the masks and then just did adjustments with filter intakes and strap systems and stuff like that but yeah, going back to my point if you were a government thinking of mass producing just sort of okay quality masks for civilians, you might want to take a page out of this book, because I imagine a design like this uh, would be very easy to mass produce. And the straps aren't all that bad on it, considering how kind of cheap and nasty it is in some degrees. Um, but yeah, so, well done Norway, you have made a very interesting mask here. I wouldn't put it down on a list of brilliant masks at all, but for what it is, it's very good. And again, if these are made to a low budget, then they're very good if these cost a lot of money to make at the time, because I guess they are kind of futuristic for the 1960s. Um, you know, maybe not so good. It reminds me kind of a bit of the MCU2P, but way ahead of its time. So I guess Norway um, did, you know, kind of um, think out of the box when they made this. So I don't have much more to say about it. There's a little sticker on here that I can't obviously read. If I just get that straight in front of the camera if it wants to focus, but it looks like something like Gogjent av direktovet for abdi stilsnet. No idea what that means, but the serial number is M25320. And I was seeing if there was any other date stamps on this, because obviously the model is the LF62, but I don't know if there's um, an individual date stamp on it anywhere that says what particular year this one was made. Uh, this, there's a sticker on this side, not a sticker, sorry, stamp says two Heli Hansen Moss Pat Am or something. So there's that. I think Heli Hansen make clothing and like cold weather gear, don't they now? And I can't see anything on the strap assembly, um, you know, on the harness or a date on. Let me just check quickly inside the mask itself. But no, I can't see any extra stamps on it. But yeah, there you go. The Heli Hansen LF62. As said, afraid I can't tell you loads about these masks because I've never really had any Norwegian masks before. But yeah, it's a very interesting kind of, you know, variation of a mask design, I think. You know, you wouldn't see something like this every day. So, there you go. Good for that.